Hi, I'm Dr. Daniel Kraft. I'm the chair of the XPRIZE Pandemic Alliance, and I'm really lucky to be joined by Jeff Huber, the founder of Open, Screen, uh, Open COVID Screen, and Professor Chris Mason from Weill Cornell Medical Center. Uh, we've just sort of wrapped the uh, announcement of the winners from the, for the XPRIZE for rapid COVID screening, for fast, frequent, cheap, and easy uh, COVID screening. Um, and we're gonna have a quick discussion about what we've learned, what surprise is about, and something about the winners. So let me pitch it over to Jeff, who really got this whole amazing XPRIZE started. Jeff. Uh, thanks, Daniel. Yeah, the genesis of this was uh, recognizing the, the critical need for innovation around testing that is frequent, fast turnaround, cheap, and easy. And uh, the competition has, has been an amazing success from uh, the initial over 700 teams that signed up to over 200 uh, finalists to the nine winners that, uh, that we announced. And it was a very rigorous process that included uh, distributed proficiency testing, uh, over 200 samples or 200 samples sent to each of the teams, give us great uh, quantitative analytical data, then uh, rigorous clinical testing that was run by uh, Chris Mason uh, and his team uh, very expertly to, to lead to uh, these fantastic set uh, of winners. Five in, uh, that are sharing our $5 million prize purse and then four in open innovation are sharing a million dollar prize. And Chris, we had an interesting process here to test the testing, maybe run through what the opportunity challenge was and some of the lessons learned. Yeah, happy to. So it was really, uh, it, as you've said, at pandemic speed. So we had to get things together quickly, get basically aliquots of titrated known pathogens, not only of uh, synthesized amounts of SARS-CoV-2, but other related pathogens that could make false positives on tests or different matrices, like doing it in saliva versus nasal pharyngeal swab matrix, like a VTM or even just in buffers. So we really wanted to build out these plates where we send them blinded to all the different teams and they don't know what's in them and we have to see how well they do. And actually some did extraordinarily well and some did really awful. So those ones uh, didn't go forward, but we really saw that people uh, came, came through with some really innovative tests uh, from all over the map, really everything from testing your olfactory neurons uh, that are popping up in your nose or throat to PCR and antigen tests, even an MRI machine was in one of them. So really a, a really broad range of innovative ideas were brought to the table, which is great. And the trick was to be not just sensitive and specific, but Frequent, cheap, easy. Yep. Uh, Jeff, frequent, I, fast, I, cheap, and easy. <laughs> what, what, what does that really mean in the context, and what are the implications of that for testing, not just uh, for COVID, but maybe other next pandemics or diseases? Uh, yeah, and I mean that was uh, part of the inspiration for for the competition from the beginning. Of it's clear that this uh, COVID nineteen pandemic has has uh, you know a significant impact on on the world and society. But in a lot of respects, this is almost a practice pandemic. Imagine what could have happened if the lethality would have been five or, or 10 times as great. And there's potential out there for other zoonotic viruses, uh, 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 pandemics to come. COVID-19 is just one in the series. And also we're still battling COVID-19 of other variants that could develop that are, are, are even more challenging. So really this innovation was yes, to have an impact on COVID-19 and, and given the pace of it, uh, we still have a, a, a lot left to go on the runway with COVID-19. Um, it's great that uh, we have vaccines coming along, but uh, with the evolution of variants and, and getting all 7 billion people in the world vaccinated, uh, there's going to be time that uh, uh, testing is really the solution, the thing that provides the safety net. Uh, to get us out the other side of this, but with others to come. Um, now with this innovation, we're equipped from the beginning to have frequent, fast, cheap, and easy testing to do a much better job uh, for the challenges uh, uh, we'll face in the future. And Chris, putting your scientist and entrepreneur hat on, where might you see the future two, five years from now with the ability to have testing molecular and otherwise, you know, in our pockets, in our smartphones and connected back to public health? I think it's really a, a brave new world and a brave, much more quantified and accurate and responsive world ahead of us. So this includes, as we've seen from some of the innovations in this XPRIZE, point of care testing, home testing, things that you can do, you know, very quickly, very cheaply, uh, you know, frequent, fast, cheap and easy. And really, I think it's going to be that there's going to be the convenience of it of having your home is not just about easiness, but also it's the safest way to do testing. So instead of having to go somewhere to get a test where you are probably coughing and infectious, you do it right in the comfort and ease of your own home. And so it is going to bring some of the convenience we've began to view pregnancy testing to the molecular diagnostics realm of infectious disease, which is desperately needed. And I think it also gives people, you know, a sense of agency. They can tell when they're sick and they can have a quantified test to say, no, I'm, I'm definitely staying home from, from work today. Uh, I know I'm sick. Here, you know, here's the results. You could maybe share it. And also it helps with the genetic epidemiology. As soon as it's positive, we start to look at sequencing methods. You can capture that virus 
use it to design uh, new vaccines to track how a virus is evolving or any any pathogen. And you know, I'm, I'm hoping that, that we'll see more and more of that. And this X Prize took something that was um, sort of a slow brewing process and really ramped it up fast. So I'm excited to see more and more companies like this deploy tests on the market and it be embedded more into the epidemiology as well. And it might go beyond infectious diseases to non-infectious. You know, uh, so that's another comp element. Maybe, maybe to close out. Um, we don't need just nine winning teams, which you can reach via the link we'll be sharing. Uh, maybe what are some of the surprises? What are your favorite elements that came out of this? And what might be the implications for, for testing and even prizes in the future? Right, go for it, Chris. I, yeah, I guess I'll go first. I, I think it's really interesting. Like the, the phenotype of anosmia where people lost their sense of smell was is unique to this coronavirus. And so it, I think it's, in, you know, we don't know if that'll be relevant for uh, necessarily other viruses, but it might be relevant for other diseases. Uh, because the nose knows, as a lot of people say, it really has an interesting, it, it itself is a phenotype. And when you smell and the degree to which you can smell things uh, and the loss of that smell all are informative. So I think uh, what's interesting is we've now seen things like the You Smell It test, which has an app and a series of strips. And then you can learn a lot about the functioning of the neurons uh, that are right in your nose. Uh, and also what, what's happening also chemically in your brain, like how is your, how are those messages being received? So I, I think uh, that was certainly unique and unique to this virus so far, but it certainly can apply to other possible diseases. Yeah, no, and I think the thing that really resonated for me is just the diversity of solutions. Um, part of the design of this uh, competition was in recognition that there is no silver bullet. Everybody wants a silver bullet. There, there isn't. We need a variety of solutions. We need supply chain diverse solutions. We need things that work for different use cases. And the diversity of solutions represented from, you know, testing types of uh, PCR based and, and lamp based and, and antigen based and, and new innovations in the open innovation category and things that are working in the lab and things that are working in the home and instant results and, and next morning results. All of those together are what it takes to, 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 to battle and fight this. And I think the collective public health impact is really profound. Um, the goal is to be able to catch occurrences before they become outbreaks and to stop transmission chains. And these are the kind of tools and technologies and innovation that make that happen for COVID-19 and for future uh, pandemics to come. Yeah, spot on. COVID's certainly been a catalyst, you know, just like Sputnik sparked the space age, COVID is sparking a bit of a health age. And things like this X Prize, which, you know, tries to trigger audacious but achievable challenges and speed them up, you know, has long-term long, long -term implications. Like the very first Ansari X Prize helped catalyze opening up space. And now we see SpaceX and others. And I think hopefully what emerges from this prize and others like it will really catalyze the future of health, medicine, diagnostics, it will benefit everybody. So um, the, the silver thought? lining of COVID-19. <laughs> Exactly. So um, for those of you listening, uh, you can learn more about this particular XPRIZE at xprize.org slash testing. You can learn more about the winning teams. You can help uh, support them going forward from funding to testing sites to regulatory. Uh, there's a lot of potential to keep collaborating here. We're still in the midst of the, the journey to help address this pandemic and prevent future ones. Thanks for joining us. Thanks.